We'd like to welcome you to the Bullion Plaza Museum. Uh, we are standing in the military exhibit room. My name is Tom Foster, Executive Director of Bullion Plaza Museum. Today we're doing something a little different. Uh, this is something that Bullion Plaza has never done before, nor have they attempted. Uh, we're actually highlighting, showcasing, not only an exhibit that we have here, but firearms that are actually on display here. At this point, I'd like to thank Arizona History Museum, Tucson, Arizona Historical Society for loaning some of the artifacts uh, in this exhibit, including the Spencer carbine that we're going to talk about today. They've been very helpful and it's greatly appreciated. It's really enhanced this exhibit. And of course, this is the Pancho Villa exhibit uh, in the military room at, at, at Bullion Plaza. Pancho Villa and, and the border conflict at that time uh, generated a lot of interest and a lot of concern along the Arizona border and the border with Mexico. Uh, there were a lot of things going on. It was a very, very active period of time. It affected a lot of people uh, along the border and oddly enough, uh, even though a lot of people don't realize it, it affected quite a few people here uh, in the Globe Miami area as well. So. Hang on, and we will, uh, we will take a look at these firearms and talk a little bit about it, his, the history behind them. So what we have in front of us this morning are two Spencer carbines. One is recent manufacture, and the other one dates back uh, into the 1860s. But before we get started on that, I think it would be interesting just to stop for a moment and, and think about what was going on. So this is 1860. Uh, to 1865. Uh, the Civil War is, is just starting and just ending in 65. And so predominantly in the field for, for military firearms, they had a muzzle-loading uh, musket. And so the ramrod, similar to this, this is a little later, but similar to this, uh, was used to load the rifle. And to, to load that, they either had loose powder or paper cartridge, so they had about 60 grains of black powder. They had a bullet similar to, to this. And then they also had uh, what they called a musket cap. So you can imagine uh, in the heat of battle, you fire one shot. You grab your ramrod, your paper cartridge, your powder, bullet, you cap, load everything and fire. And then while you're being rushed by the other side, you have to stop and do that all over again. So one shot at a time, one load, took a little time, uh, maybe three rounds a minute for a really, really good soldier. And then all of a sudden in 1860, you come up with, with this, uh, which is the Spencer carbine developed by Chris, uh, Christopher Spencer. So 1860, you have a model 1860. And instead of all of this, you now have, you now have one cartridge, what they call the metallic cartridge. So you think about your 22 caliber rifle cartridge. So this was a rimfire cartridge copper, it had the black powder contained inside the cartridge, and then it had the projectile or the bullet loaded on top of all of that. So instead of all that work for one shot, you had seven metallic cartridges that were loaded into one rifle uh, and could be fired fairly rapidly. The hammer had to be cocked at each, at each shot but you could operate the lever, which we'll show you in a little bit, and you could load these rounds as quick as you could run the lever and, and, and cock. So these are modern cartridges now, and these are all dummy cartridges, so when we show you this stuff, there's no danger in, in loading the firearm. So you have the Spencers. Later on, in the Model 1865, which we'll show you in a little while, a little closer, it had what it called, what was called a stabler cutoff. 
That cutoff allowed the operator to manipulate that cutoff so he could fire one round at a time and keep the, the magazine and the butt loaded uh, with the other rounds. So he had sort of a reserve, so one round at a time, and then he could turn that off and feed the other, the other seven rounds uh, through the magazine tube. Very innovative. Uh, this also came in a rifle. So there were two versions. This primarily was for mounted uh, soldiers. So it has a saddle ring uh, on one side. This could be connected to a leather piece that was slung over the shoulder. So it could be used on horseback. The rifles, of course, were used by uh, other soldiers non-mounted. This is the 1860, and this is a contemporary uh, copy. So you can see how the action works here. And then for each shot, the hammer had to be cocked. And then there was a magazine tube in the back for loading. So you can see, as we talked about previously, uh, how much quicker you can bring one of these into, uh, into action against an adversary. This is the original. This is an 1865 Spencer. You can see the difference in this one versus the other. This has what they call a stabler cutoff. So this allowed you to fire one round at a time uh, and keep the magazine in reserve. So the 1865s that were sold to Mexico, actually we're going to talk about in a minute here, all had the all had the stabler cutoff. So these were sold as surplus uh, to the Mexican government. And we don't know for sure if this one was used in the conflict with Villa from about 1912 to about 1924. There were still cartridges available. The firearm was still serviceable. We don't know if it was used in that conflict or not, but definitely sold to Mexico. Uh, it was one of a group uh, that were sold and these uh, were marked, uh, and you'll see with some of the close-ups that we'll show, us, show you, uh, you can see that they are marked RM, uh, Republica Mexicana, uh, so Republica Mexico.